Raising private investment, predominantly from passive pension partners or those that have SaaS business pensions, combined with commercial property, is a marriage made in heaven right now, as the SaaS receives income tax-free and your commercial property investments or your deals can really accelerate when you combine with one or two or three passive pension partners. You don't need many. So the key thing is, how do you present yourself? What, do, what kind of deals do you present? What do those deals look like? And what kind of due diligence do we have to do to present ourselves in the right light to create that first initial connection? Let's jump in right now. As one of the Taylor Capital Club advisors, Kevin Whelan from Empowered Pensions, gives his insights on how to present yourself to attract SaaS pension, passive pension partners to fund your deals. All right, so if you get the, the whole process working, then you, you get into a place where I call you've got, you know, you got yourself in flow. And there are always two flows you're trying to manage. Is, is that right? You're trying to manage the flow of the deal and the flow of the money. And it's not always easy to get that flow exactly right. So what comes first, the chicken or the egg? And I think there needs to be a balance between the two. So if I just quickly move on down to explain what I... Because they usually start, um, maybe one or two guys in, the, in your group can resonate. They first start by looking at what they've done um, in terms of you know, getting access to their own equity in their own homes. And then moving on down to the next one, which is they, once they run out of their own money, they tend to look towards somebody close to them, friends, family, and so on. And then what do they do? They then get to the next stage where they're having to ask strangers for money and that's a different place, isn't it? That's when the whole world kind of looks a much harder place to get access to. And one of the things I see when I see people speaking at networking events is they get to a place on the next slide down, which I call NFL. And this is definitely not a play on the National Football League in America, but it's, I've got no funds left, I've got no friends left. <laughs> and I'm really in a place where I just need to, you know, work out what is my strategy. And, and what I want to try and help you do is professionalize the strategy so that you become both a professional developer and a professional fundraiser. So let's start by understanding what, what is the solution to the problem? So if we move on down to just have a look at what are people out there getting as a return on their investment at the moment? So if I've got money in the bank and I'm getting 1%, whether it's money in my personal account or in my business account, I'm probably getting 1%. If I've got money traditionally in the stock market, in a pension, <clears throat> I'm getting 6% probably, but by the time I pay my charges, it's normally 2% for the advisor and the fund manager and the, and the intermediary, uh, the, the, um, the institution who's holding the money, the trustee, then I'm getting net 4%. Is any, can anybody unmute themselves, down and give me a figure for you know, what, what they might get on an HMO or what they might get on a commercial, or you can tell me what you would get on a, what your, your team would expect to get on a commercial project? Well, um, well like, let's take Michelle and Douglas's deal. It's quite relevant because they're coming on after this and uh, their project, for example, the, uh, the loan is for 160K, the investor's putting in uh, 80K from his pension and he's getting a 15% uh, return on his money plus a 33% equity stake in the, in the deal. Which wow. is quite nice. Yeah. Now, compare that to 1% and 4%. Now, if you guys are getting 15, 20, 25% return on your money and willing to share some of that incredible value with somebody else, the question which rhetorically I'm asking you now is why is there not a queue of people just knocking on your door saying, give me access to, to some of that value? And, mm. and the main reason why there isn't a queue comes down to a single word and that that word is trust they haven't yet worked out how to build enough trust to be able to do this time and time and time again so they you need a place to get them to start that's the key and if you want to move on to the next one Dan I'll explain where, where money is so private investors have got money in these places 
They've got money in their personal cash, which is the green window. They've got money in their business cash. Now, let me ask you a question here as well, Dan. I've got money in my, I've got six businesses and each one of those businesses has got money in the, in the current account. And recently, and you probably better work it out, if I had 250,000 pounds worth of spare cash in one of my businesses and it wasn't giving me any interest on the, on the money, what did I do with the money, do you reckon? Well, you want to invest it, sure. Well, I loaned it to somebody who does developments just like you. Oh. So, so let's be real and understand that many, many businesses are stockpiling cash right now. They don't want to pay the tax on their dividends. They don't want to take the money out of their business. So there's a real uh, opportunity to talk to business owners who've got money in cash. And I reach out to business owners because the business owner gives me two bites of that cherry, which helps them. One is their business cash. And the other is the concept of SAS, which is the pension, the big yellow door. And the reason why the pension is such a wonderful opportunity is it's because it's money that's already invested in the stock market and people have just such a, a poor relationship with their money. It's a disconnect with their money. Um, most people will react to that. I spoke to a guy this morning who had 400,000 in his pension. He said, all I ever did was look at it once a year and they never really have a true relationship with that money. Mm -hmm. So using the business cash and the pension in an SaaS environment is known uh, as really working with business owners, primarily working with business owners, not, not people who've just got small amounts of cash in the bank, because when you're competing for cash, you're always going to be struggling for them to reinvest. Whereas businesses always have money and businesses always have pensions. So if we move on to the next one, Dan, we'll, we'll just talk about the size of that pot. So the big lock vault that my business reach, and we reach something like 10 million pounds every single month. Um, now that's a lot of uh, other people's money. I hope you'd agree. So you know, we've got a problem, right? So some of you, I'm hoping, are going to be smiling in a minute when you realize that my problem is if 10 million pounds worth of money a month in that locked vault is suddenly being opened into the, the next one down, which is the small self-administered pension scheme, which is a pension scheme specifically designed and built for business owners that allows them to take complete control of their money. They become the legal owner and operator of their money. They become the trustee. So they can design and direct that money wherever they want to. Um, great news if some of you guys have got pensions that you can now realize you can unlock and use for yourself. But the big prize is the money that's outside of that. And as we're attracting so much, the problem is, what are they going to invest their money in? So we have to constantly look for great people that our clients get a connection to so they can invest that money. So I'm hoping there's some good people in your, uh, in your group, Dan, is that right? Yes, absolutely. Um, there's some absolutely cracking deals. Uh, one, for example, income day one of uh, 250,000. Um, chunky numbers, but the, what I like about it um, is there's going to be 24 streams of income. And I like diversified multiple streams of income. It's a, it's a good hedge, it's a good de-risk. And commercial property is all about kind of de-risking, de-hedging, you know, identifying ring fencing and uh, transferring if you can, but at least mitigating risk. For me, it's all about that. It's about protecting the downside. And, uh, you know, Dan, if, if you're passing on that wisdom to your group, and I guess that's the whole essence of it, when we get to talk in a few minutes about something called the ROIs, the four ROIs, you'll realize what an incredible value that you'll be bringing to your, to your team. And also that if they can demonstrate that um, to other people or to me in my community, then quite literally they'll never run out of money.